Welcome to AZ900 Journey Part 9. Today, we're breaking down more real exam scenarios that will boost your confidence and get you ready for that Azure certification. These are the exact question types you'll face on test day, complete with detailed explanations and practical examples. Question 46. This question requires that you evaluate the text inside to determine if it is correct. Authorization is the process of verifying a user's credentials. Instructions, review the text inside. If it makes the statement correct, select no change is needed. If the statement is incorrect, select the answer choice that makes the statement correct. This is testing one of the most commonly confused concepts in cybersecurity, the difference between authentication and authorization. The question is asking, which security process is responsible for verifying a user's credentials, like username and password? The options are A, no change is needed, B, authentication, C, federation, D, ticketing. Think of going through airport security. First, you show your ID to prove OUR, authentication. Then you show your boarding pass to prove what you're allowed to access, like the business class lounge, authorization. Authentication equals who are you? Authorization is what are you allowed to do? They work together, but are completely different steps. B, authentication. The statement is incorrect as written. The correct term is authentication, not authorization. Authentication is the process of verifying a user's credentials, like checking their username, password, fingerprint, or OTP to confirm their identity. Here's the key difference you must remember for the exam. Authentication verifies who you are, identity verification, while authorization determines what you can access, permission verification. Authentication always happens first, then authorization happens second after you've proven your identity. Think of it this way. When you log into your company email with your username and password, that's authentication. The system is verifying your credentials to confirm you are really you. Once you're logged in, the system checks your permissions to see if you can access certain folders or admin settings. That's authorization. Why the other options are wrong. A, no change needed. Wrong. Authorization is not about verifying credentials. Authorization happens after authentication and checks what resources you're permitted to access based on your assigned roles and permissions. C, federation. This refers to linking identity management systems across different organizations, like single sign-on between multiple companies, not the basic process of verifying credentials. D, ticketing. This isn't a standard security term for credential verification. While systems may use tickets, like Kerberos tickets, the process itself is still called authentication. Quick takeaway, authentication equal H-O-U-R, verify credentials. Authorization equals what you can do, check permissions. Always in that order. Remember, you can't authorize someone until you authenticate them first. Question 47. There has been an attack on your public-facing website, and the application's resources have been overwhelmed and exhausted, and are now unavailable to users. What service should you use to prevent this type of attack? This question describes a distributed denial-of-service DDoS attack, where massive traffic floods your website, overwhelming resources, and making it unavailable to legitimate users. You need to identify which Azure service is specifically built to absorb and filter out these huge volumetric attacks at network scale. The options are A, DDoS protection, B, Azure Firewall, C, Network Security Group, D, Application Gateway. Imagine thousands of bots flooding a ticket-selling website all at once, crashing the servers so real customers can't buy tickets. That's a DDoS attack. You need a specialized shield that can handle millions of malicious requests and filter them out before they reach your application. Correct answer, DDoS protection. When your application's resources are overwhelmed and exhausted by an attack, you're experiencing a DDoS attack. An Azure DDoS protection is the service specifically designed to prevent this. Azure DDoS protection uses Azure's massive global network scale to automatically absorb and scrub multi-gigabyte volumetric attacks before they reach your application. It provides always-on traffic monitoring that compares actual traffic against thresholds, and when an attack is detected, mitigation kicks in automatically within minutes to block malicious traffic while letting legitimate users through. DDoS protection handles three attack types, volumetric attacks, UDP floods, protocol attacks, SYN floods at layers 3, 4, and works with WAF for layer 7 attacks. Why the other options are incorrect. 
B, Azure Firewall. This filters traffic based on IP addresses, ports, and applications, but it's not designed to handle massive scale DDoS floods that can overwhelm infrastructure. C, Network Security Group. NSGs are basic traffic filters with simple allow deny rules and have zero DDoS mitigation capabilities. They'd be completely overwhelmed. D, Application Gateway. This is a load balancer with WAF that protects against layer seven application attacks like SQL injection, but application gateway itself can become a DDoS victim. Microsoft recommends using DDoS protection and application gateway together. DDoS handles network layer floods, WAF handles application threats. Quick takeaway, resources overwhelmed by attack equals DDoS protection is your answer. It's the only service built to absorb massive attack volumes using Azure's global scale. To get the free PDF or mock test, comment PDF or mock or both, I will share the downloadable link within the next 24 hours. Question 48. A company is planning to use Azure services and they wanted to understand the complete SLA offering provided by Microsoft for these services. Which of the following statement regarding Azure SLA is correct? This question is testing your understanding of how Azure service level agreements are structured and organized across different Azure services. Think about whether Microsoft treats all services the same way or gives each service its own specific uptime guarantees and terms. The options are A, SLAs are not contractual documents. B, each Azure service offering has a unique SLA. C, Azure preview features are covered by an SLA. D, the Azure subscription has a single all-encompassing SLA. Imagine a shopping mall where each store has its own return policy. The electronics store has different terms than the clothing store, right? Similarly, Azure Virtual Machines might promise 99.99% uptime, while Azure Storage promises 99.9%. Each service has its own unique promise based on what it does. Correct answer. Each Azure service offering has a unique SLA. This is absolutely correct. Each Azure service has its own individual SLA with specific terms, limitations, uptime percentages, and service credit policies tailored to that service. For example, virtual machines have different SLA tiers depending on configuration, 95% for single instance with HDD, 99.99% for multi-instance across availability zones, while Azure SQL Database might have 99.99% uptime, and Azure DNS uniquely offers 100% SLA. Microsoft maintains separate SLA documents for over 130 Azure services, each defining specific performance targets, exclusions, and compensation terms for that particular service. Why the other options are incorrect. A, SLAs are not contractual documents. Wrong, Azure SLAs are absolutely formal contractual agreements between Microsoft and customers that legally commit Microsoft to specific uptime and connectivity guarantees. C, Azure preview features are covered by an SLA. Wrong. Preview features and free tier services typically do not have SLAs. For example, Azure Dev Test Labs and free tier cognitive services have no SLA coverage. D, the Azure subscription has a single all-encompassing SLA. Wrong, there's no single blanket SLA covering everything. Each service you use has its own separate SLA that you need to review individually. Quick takeaway. Each Azure service with its own unique SLA document with specific uptime guarantees and terms. Always check the individual SLA for each service you're planning to use. If this video is helping you, support us by hitting the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Question 49. Azure Germany is available to eligible customers and partners globally who intend to do business in the EU EFTA, including the United Kingdom. How many Azure Germany regions are there in context to the above statement? This question is asking specifically about the number of Azure regions located in Germany that serve European customers with data residency and compliance requirements. You need to count how many distinct Azure Day Data Center regions Microsoft operates within Germany's geographical borders. The options are A, 4, B, 3, SU, D, 6. Think of regions like separate branch offices of a bank in different cities. Each region is an independent data center location within Germany. Just like a company might have offices in both Frankfurt and Berlin, Azure has multiple regional data centers spread across Germany for redundancy and performance. Correct answer, two. Azure currently operates two regions in Germany. Germany North, located in Berlin, and Germany West Central, located in Frankfurt. 
These two regions work as paired regions, meaning they're geographically separated to provide disaster recovery and business continuity for customers who need to store data within Germany to meet EU data residency, GDPR compliance, and German data protection requirements. Both regions support availability zones and provide the full range of Azure services to customers doing business in the EU EFTA region. It's worth noting that Azure Germany originally referred to a separate sovereign cloud offering that had regions in Frankfurt and Magdeburg, but that service was retired and customers were migrated to these current public Azure regions in Germany. Why the other options are incorrect? A4, incorrect. Germany only has two active Azure regions, not four. B, three, incorrect. There are exactly two regions in Germany, not three. D, six, incorrect. This number is way too high. Germany has only two regions currently operational. Quick takeaway, Azure Germany equals two regions. Germany North in Berlin and Germany West Central in Frankfurt. They're paired together for high availability and disaster recovery. Question 50. Your company plans to migrate all its network resources to Azure. You need to start the planning process by exploring Azure. What should you create first? This question tests your understanding of Azure's organizational hierarchy. What's the very first thing you need before you can create any Azure resources? Think about the logical order. What's the foundation that everything else is built upon? The options are A, a subscription, B, a resource group C, a virtual network, D, a management group. Think of it like building a house. Before you can add rooms, resource groups, or install plumbing, virtual networks, you need to own the land first. Subscription. A subscription is your billing account and access boundary. Without it, Azure won't let you create anything at all. Correct answer, a subscription. An Azure subscription is absolutely the first thing you must create before exploring or deploying any resources in Azure. Here's the Azure hierarchy from top to bottom. Subscription, resource group, resources, like VMs, virtual networks, storage. A subscription serves as the fundamental billing and administrative boundary in Azure. It's your account container that enables access to Azure services. Without a subscription, you literally cannot create resource groups, virtual networks, or any other Azure resources. When you start an Azure migration project using Azure Migrate, the very first step is selecting an Azure subscription, and then you create or select a resource group within that subscription. Microsoft's Cloud Adoption Framework also emphasizes that creating subscriptions is the initial setup step before any resource deployment. Why the other options are incorrect. B, a resource group. You can't create a resource group without having a subscription first. Resource groups exist inside subscriptions and are used to organize resources logically. C, a virtual network. Virtual networks are resources that must be deployed within a resource group, which itself requires a subscription. This comes much later in the hierarchy. D, a management group. Management groups are optional containers that organize multiple subscriptions for enterprise governance. They're not required to get started and subscriptions must already exist before you can group them. Quick takeaway, subscription equals your Azure account foundation. Everything else is built on top of it. No subscription equals no Azure resources. That wraps up part nine of your AZ900 journey. You're making real progress toward your Azure certification and that cloud career paying $85,000 and beyond. Get your free PDF study guide and practice test by dropping a comment below. Hit subscribe so part 10 is waiting for you. And I'll see you in the next episode.